Though at a certain point, you really ain't visiting. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 Distant family, amen. amen. And it's good to see everyone, though. Happy Mother's Day to all you mamas. Mama and them. You got a good mother. You need to thank the Lord. People in this old world, children in this world, having to get by without a good one. So if you do have one, you need to just thank the Lord. It's a good thing. Have a good, godly mother. Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 5 this morning. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. And last week we talked about the savor of our life. What do we put off of people? What do they see in us and hear in us? And smell on us and is our life pleasing to God? It's a good question to ask. The Bible says that Jesus offered himself a sacrifice, a sweet smelling savor. It was accepted to God, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for you and I. Our life should be pleasing to God also. We've been talking about our walk. Walk. Now when Jesus saved you, he didn't Take you home immediately, right? Still here, obviously. So he left us for a purpose. And our walk in this world is supposed to please God and magnify the honor and glory of the Lord and lead people to Christ. And your life's going to do one of two things. You know, we always talk about you can't ride a fence, can't ride a fence, and you can't. Your life is either going to draw people to Christ or repel people from Christ. God helps someone that lives their life, a Christian, in such a way that pushes people away from Jesus Christ rather than, rather than make them want to know this Savior that you know. Man, that'd be a bad place to be. Stand before the Lord one day and look in those eyes of fire, and I know somebody's always going to crawl up in Jesus' lap. Man, you ain't crawled up in Jesus' lap. You ever heard anybody say that? I have a hundred times. I'm just going to go to heaven and crawl up in Jesus' lap. Those eyes of the flame of fire are going to look into you and through you and for the first time in your life because here nobody knows everything you said and thought and done. He knows. and He's going to look at you and judge your works and God help and we have to stand before Jesus Christ when that, that judgment seat of Christ and give an account for doing and saying things and living our life in such a way that's repelled people from that Savior. That's a bad place to be. Amen. That is not a good way to start Mother's Day sermon, is it? Mm-hmm. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse number 3. So last week we said, Be therefore followers of God, chapter verse 1. But look at verse 3. It says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. The title of the message this morning is Walk as Children of Light. Brother Jeff, you pray for us, brother.
this place is going to be blessed this hour. Uh, let's go to James, and uh, he tries his best to give us what you've given us for your glory, for your glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Book of Ephesians speaks of a worthy walk. That's Ephesians 4 and 1. It tells us in Ephesians 5 and 2 to walk in love. And here in Ephesians 5 and verse number 8, it tells us to walk as children of light. You know that God's concerned with your walk. Yes, if you say, man, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. That is an eternal thing that cannot be Amen. undone. If, you if you're saved and you lose your mind and want to go to hell, you can't. Yeah. You've been born again by the grace of God because you are in Christ. But God is concerned with your walk while you are here. Bible tells us, Ephesians 5 and 1, Be ye therefore followers of God. And it tells us to walk as children of light. God is light, the Bible says. In 1 John 1 and 5, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. He's not like you and I. Ye are the light of the world. Jesus said, as long as he's here, he was the light. But then he told those boys, he said, you are the light of the world. And if you're born again by the grace of God, that light dwells inside you. Amen. But we know that just because you say that old nature is not eradicated. If you give it its head, that old man that we read about and talked about in the book of Ephesians, you're going to say the wrong thing. Right. And do the wrong thing because there's still some darkness in you, that old flesh has never been saved and never will be saved until it's transformed mm -hmm. at the rapture. Amen. But not God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God is light. Amen. And in him is no darkness at all. Right. You know, people trust in a lot of things in this world. Trust in religion. Trust in good works. Trust in things that have darkness in them. But if you trust God for your salvation through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, you'll trust in one that is light and has no darkness. He does no wrong. He can do no wrong. That's the one we're trusting. Amen. The Bible says that we should be followers of God, and God is light. We, you and I as Christians, are not left without God. God didn't save your soul and they say, here you go, boy, have at it. Do the best you can. Some of us probably would have done a little better than others, but all of us would have made a mess of that thing, right? If you have to do it, that's what these cults are, doing it their own way, and they are a mess. We were not left without guidance. God gave us guidance. God gave us light. We have light of a Savior. We have light of the Scriptures. And we have light of the Spirit, the Holy right. Spirit of God. Yes, turn to, told your place here, we're going to come back, but turn to the Gospel according to John chapter number 8. John chapter number 8. This is a familiar story. This is the woman that was taken in adultery. Where the man is, we don't know. Commit adultery, it takes two of you, right? The right. physical act. You can do it in your mind, but if you're caught in the act physically, it takes two. But the man, we don't know where he was. Some say he was in the crowd. I don't know. It might have been. It's a setup. Yeah. Either way, she was guilty, though. Right. Whether it was a setup or not, she was guilty. Caught in the act. And Jesus forgave her, and he told her, he said, go and sin no more. You don't hear a lot of preaching about that. You hear a lot of preaching about the forgiveness, but you don't hear much about the go and sin no more. But look what Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse number 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We have a light given to us of a Savior, an indwelling Savior. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is what the Bible says. We have that light that wasn't there before. When we were lost, we didn't know him. You know what you did? You know what I did? 
who walked in darkness. And we were searching for that light, and we even in our mind, in our mind, had some things that we felt like were light. We were good people, most of us, good old boy. Work a job, take care of your family. Friday night, eh. We were doing the best we can. But we didn't have the light of the Savior that we have now. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus changed my life. Jesus changed your life if you've been born again by the grace of God. He gave us light to walk by in this life. So we have the light of the Savior. Turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. We have a light of the Savior. We have a light of the Scriptures. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This book will tell you where to go and what to do when you get there. Amen. Amen. A lot of people tell you where to go in this world, but when you get there, you don't know what to do. This book will tell you where to go, what to do when you get there, why to do it, and what's going to happen. It's the scriptures. We have the light of the scriptures. 2 Peter chapter number 1. This is Peter speaking. and Old Peter, he knew some stuff, man. He had a big, he had a big mouth. I do too sometimes. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse number 19. So this is the previous verse that he was speaking about seeing Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration and how great it was, man. But look what verse number 19 says. But we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. He saw Jesus transfigured. He saw some of his glory. I don't believe he saw it all. He probably just blowed up or something. But he saw it. And you know what Peter said? He said, we have a more sure word than that. Peter said, I saw him. I saw him transfigured, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. More sure than seeing something with your eyes is reading this book and knowing that it's God's word. Amen. So we have a lot of the Savior, have a lot of the Scripture, we have a lot of the Spirit. You know that every believer has the Holy Spirit of God indwelling in. Amen. Indwelling. Don't worry about the second act of grace that comes when you get your hair and your suit right. Don't, don't fall for that, right? Some people would tell you, I ain't got the Holy Spirit because I got this big old nice thick beard I got. <laughs> big old beard. I see that big old beard. I probably can't see it from back there, can you? you? Got to get up close to see it. You can't have the Holy Spirit and have that. Every believer has the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of them as a light to God. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're talking about walking as children of light. We are not left without guidance here in this world. God gave us what we need to be able to walk a worthy walk, a walk of love, to walk as children of light, to walk a walk that is pleasing to Him. He gave it to us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse number 10. Verse number 9 says, I have not seen. We just, you know, you may have some kind of an idea, but you don't know all the good things God has prepared for you. Your finite mind just can't comprehend it. Look at verse 10. It says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That Holy Spirit of God dwells inside you and reveals spiritual things right. to you. Before you got saved... 
you might have known every word in this book, but you couldn't understand it. Because it's spiritually discerned thing, and you did not have the Holy Spirit to discern it. There are prof- I say I said this often. There are professors all over this country in colleges, and they probably know this, this book better than you and I do. And they don't believe, and they're lost, and they're leading people into damnation and corrupting young men and young women's lives because they, it's a spiritually discerned book, and they don't have the spirit to discern it. But we have the light of the Spirit. Lost people don't. Don't get your spiritual counsel from somebody that's lost. Just because they're old and they say witty things and they know some quotes. And You find you a good saved man, a good born again woman and get some spiritual counsel from them. That'll help your life. So we're supposed to walk as children of light. Genesis 1.14, we just went through that. God divided the day and the night. The night from the day. He divided the light from the dark. He divided the good from the bad. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look there. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse number 3 where we picked up at. The Bible says, Ephesians 4, 4, 5 and 3, I'm sorry, 5 and 3, Ephesians 5 and 3. It says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become the saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Thanks for this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. We are never in doubt as to what list to put things under, are we? This world will tell you good's bad and bad's good and evil's good, but we know, don't we? We know what's wrong to be covetous. We know what's wrong to be a drunkard. We know what's wrong to be a whoremonger. We know We know what the old man looks like and sounds like and feels like. We know what the new man looks like and sounds like and feels like. If you're born again by the grace of God, you got a Bible, you and I are without excuse. We know. God told us to walk as children of light. We're not in doubt as to what light is and what darkness is. We're not in doubt as to what bad is and good is. He's given us the light of the Savior, the light of the Scriptures, and the light of the Spirit that we might know. Now these verses here in verse number 3 says, let these things not be once named among you. I mean, we can't help what this old world does. Great, but so much you and I can do about that. But in our homes, we can do something about that, can't we? In our church, we can do something about that, can't we? And we should. Now look at some of these things. Fornication, man, no doubt. Uncleanness, no doubt. Covetousness, that thing will destroy your life. It'll eat you up. Look at verse number four. The Bible says, neither foolishness, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Filthiness, we got it. Foolish talking, a little bit of a gray line sometimes there, ain't it? What's foolish and what's not? The Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin. You don't have to be filthy mouth to be saying something that's foolish. And then there's people who tell you that jesting shouldn't be telling no jokes. What some people say. There's a time and a place for everything. Right? 
But according to the scriptures, the context, I don't believe that's what that's talking about. I'm not a jokester. I mean, I get them. They just ain't funny. You'll probably never hear me say, you ever heard one about the goat walking across the field? I just don't tell jokes. And if you tell me one, I smile, and that thing ain't funny to me. I like to laugh. It's all right to have a good time. In its place, comedian, I'd rather you punch me in the eye to have to sit down and watch a comedian. I just, that thing just, it just, it just ain't funny to me. It's the way, it's, it's just the way it's time to me. Now, that thing's funny to you. It's all right. Right? You don't have to tell me to tell my face that I'm saved, and I won't tell you to quit being a clown, right? God made people different. You can see it in children. One child is just as serious and grave, and the other one's hanging off the ceiling fan and get a laugh. Why? They have, that's just the way they're made. People are different. Now, the Bible says that it's particularly aged men are supposed to be grave and sober, but the Bible also says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now, we all can't be the same. We're all not going to be the same, right? But there's some things we all should be. And this filthiness and foolish talking and fornication and all these things, the Bible names that we know are wrong and darkness and bad, the Bible says, let it not once be named among you. And there's no doubt about it. Well, what is this foolish talking? What is this joking, this jesting? It's important. Tell you what I believe it is according to the scriptures. Turn to Psalm chapter number one. You know, we go out in this old world and we work. If a man don't work, neither should he eat. That, that'll clear up a lot of stuff right there. If a man's able to work and he don't, and he don't have means, if, if, if he just don't eat for a while, that, that'll, that'll clear up some stuff right there. But we go in this old world and we work and we go places and we go to the store and we go here and we go there and we're around all kind of people all the time. That doesn't have to be our people, right? You are my people. I spend time with my family and thank God for them. We blood, but they ain't my people. They don't think like I do and believe like I do and believe like what this book says. I tell you what the foolish talking and the jesting and all that stuff is, I believe. Look at Psalm 101. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. This foolish talking, this jesting, this unconvenient stuff are people making fun and mocking God and his book. Amen. You don't have to think very hard to know somebody that's like that. That's always got a comment that's negative against God, that's negative against his book, that's negative against the King James Bible, that's negative against what you believe and your life is lined up the way this book says. That's right. Amen. That shouldn't be your crowd. You know Why? Because if somebody's going to be changed, it's going to be you, not them. You don't make something unclean clean by touching it with something that's clean. According to the Bible, that's what defiles. If something's clean, touches something that's unclean, the clean thing becomes undefiled. Does that mean you can't go to the family union to witness? Man, go down there. Your family needs the Lord just like mine does. But that's not where you spend all your time. That's not your crowd. That's the foolish talking and the jesting and the things that are not convenient that God says shouldn't be named among you. That's what the Bible says. Look at that verse number two. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Day and night pretty much covers it all, don't it? There ain't no third option, is it? It's either day or it's night. Well, there's twilight. It's one or the other. 
This should be on our mind. God should be on our mind. His book should be on our mind. His witness, the way we live in our life for him, our walk as children of light should be on our mind all the time, day and night. It should rule and regulate what we do, the way we live our lives. Turn back to the book of Ephesians with me. So don't let somebody tell you because you told a joke, your heart ain't right with God. Don't necessarily have to be a jokester, but you know what? Everybody's not the same. But there's some things we should all be the same about. Look at verse number six with me. Bible says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, all these things we just mentioned in name, cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Don't be drawn back into your old ways. That's, that's particularly dangerous for a young convert. Somebody just gets saved and man, all of a sudden they have new vision and new understanding and things are different and they pick that Bible up and they read that Bible and it's not just a book anymore. That thing's speaking to them. It's like no Indian said, this book speaketh to me. But you know, those old friends are still close and those old family members are still close and those old haunts that are still hanging around. And those old habits. So you know you get in the habit of doing something that's hard to undo it. I say stinking like three times a sentence. Everything's stinking. My wife's like, you, you, you probably shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> it's a habit. It's a hard habit to break. Habits are hard to break. It's a dangerous time, particularly for a new co convert. Be, let no man deceive you with vain words. Don't be drawn back into the old ways. You know what I thought about when I studied this? I thought about the book of Judges. We just went through that a year or two ago, right? It's a good study. And man, those Israelites, they had cry out and get a judge and he or she would deliver them and it was a great time. But God turned their back on it and they'd be right back where they were. And the phrase was, did evil in the sight of the Lord. You can learn a lot by repeated phrases in your Bible. Get you a repeated, a repeated phrase and study that thing. God's repeating it for a reason. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. They were drawn back into their old ways. Turn to Romans chapter 2 with me. Romans chapter number 2. Romans chapter 2. Be not deceived. By vain words, by vain men, by vain women, and back into the old ways, you are no longer a child of darkness. If you're saved, there was a time you were in darkness and walked in darkness and were a child of darkness. But if you're born again, you have been delivered into the light. You have the witness. You have a light of a Savior. You have a light of the Scriptures. You have a light of the Spirit dwelling inside you. And you have no business spending your time and living your life in darkness or with the people of darkness. That's what the Bible says. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Look at Romans chapter 2. Look at verse number 5. But after thy hardness and penitent heart treasures up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deed. Them lost people that hate God and mock you, God's going to take care of that. But you need to worry about what you're doing and the way you're living your life and the way you're walking your walk. Because according to what the Bible says, we are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ one day and give an account for everything done in this body. For our deeds. 
Is that a judgment to go to heaven or hell? No. If you've been born again by the grace of God, heaven's going to beat your home. That judgment seat of Christ is not a heaven or hell judgment, but we are going to give an account for the way we lived our life, for our works, what sort it was. And it's bad to say there's going to be some people that's born again by the grace of God, and they're going to be standing before that judgment seat of Christ neck deep in ashes because they live for themselves and live contrary to what the book says we should live and live for themselves and walk in darkness and all those works are going to be burned up. And it affects people. It affects those family members that you say you love and you want to see them saved. It affects those friends that you say you love and you want to see them saved when we live according to darkness and do not walk as children of light. It affects people. You know, people, people tend to focus on what you have to do. Well, I ain't going to church down there because you have to do so and so. Well, they preach in the Bible. And that church you're going to, don't, right? But I ain't got to do so-and-so like they do down there. Oh, why can't I? Ain't got, I I'm not going down there because you can't do this and that and be a member of the church down there. Well, they preaching the Bible down there. And your church is, well, I know, but. People focus on what they have to do or what they can't do. And not what a joyful, peaceful life it is to serve God. Amen. Peace. Peace to serve God. That means I won't have any hard times. You're going to have some hard times, but you'll have peace in it. Amen. There's going to be some tough times, but you'll have joy in it. Best life you're ever going to live is serving the Lord. That kind of talk, if you hear someone, is someone's got a deceived heart. They've been deceived. And many times if you hear someone speaking like that, you hear young people say it a lot. They raised up in church and made to do and made to come and they get a certain age and they all of a sudden don't want that no more. And if you start to hear that kind of talk, it's a deceived heart and before very long, they're going to be out the door and out neck deep in this world walking in darkness in a stinking mess. Be not deceived, the Bible says. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 5 with me. Look at verse number 9. Ephesians 5. Oh, we got plenty of time. Verse number 9. The Bible says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You know that the savior, savor of your life depends on what your life consists of. What your life is, your walk, your talk, your desires, your wants. That's what the savor of your life depends on. And whether it's a sweet smelling sacrifice to God or whether it's a stench in the nostrils of God. I mean, it can be both. Yeah, it can be either one. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at this. We'll come right back. A few pages back, Galatians chapter 5. And we know about the fruit of the Spirit, right? It's the things in our life that the Holy Spirit wants to work and bring about in the life of a believer. Look at verse number 19. The Bible says, Galatians 5 verse number 19. The Bible says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Man, it's a long list, ain't it? Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. Say, why well, ain't done none of them? And such like, God got you right there. And such like, other which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit 
is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. What's being manifest in your life? That's a good way to see, isn't it? If those works of the flesh are constantly on your mind, you might have a problem. Because that's not of the Spirit. That's not love and joy and peace. And I'm not talking about skipping through the meadows with the sodomites. That's what some people tell you love and joy and peace is. That's what they said in the 60s, a bunch of stinking hippies, right? That's the ones that's running the country now. It's not love and joy and peace. The fruit of the Spirit is these things. Look at verse number 24. And they that are Christ, you belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. We, through the Spirit, can crucify the affections and lust of this body, and those works of the flesh won't have to dominate us. Well, you see, you saying that'll never pop up in my mind. <laughs> Brother Ted Max said a mind's a terrible thing. Don't you believe that? It might pop up in there, but it doesn't have to be your mindset. It doesn't have to be your lifestyle. Not if you follow that the Spirit and the Holy Spirit that lives inside of every believer is leading and guiding. You are walking in that light and following that light through the power of the Holy Spirit. That does not have to be your lifestyle. It does not have to dominate your heart and your mind and your life and your family and God forbid your church. It doesn't have to be that way. You and I, because of the light that God's given us, can walk as children of light. And I'm probably preaching at you like I think you ain't. Thank God for you. I know y'all. Thank God for you. I love all of you. You know, when we walk, turn back to Ephesians 5. Let me show you this last verse. Look at Ephesians 5. Look at verse number 8. The Bible says, For ye were sometimes darkness. Thank God we've been delivered. Amen. Translate. You know, there's times for sure that you and I are not what we should be. But man, thank God. You remember how it used to be? I remember how it used to be. I haven't been saved long enough where I don't remember how it used to be. The Bible says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You know, when you and I occasionally walk as children of light, we prove some things. Now, Man, God's true. Let God be true and every man a liar. That King James Bible true. It is what it is. You know, you can't make anyone believe anything. And God's God. He doesn't have to prove himself to anyone. But when you and I, as Christians, Christ-like, born-again people, walk as children like we do prove some things. Well, what are some things that we prove? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First off, when you and I walk as children of light, we prove that God changes people. God changes people when he saves their soul. Look at 1 Corinthians 6. Look at verse number 9. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Here's another list, man. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse number 11 says, And such were some of you. That is quickly becoming one of my favorite verses in the Bible. 
and such were some of you. When we walk as children of light, we prove that God's salvation changes people because it changed you and I. We don't walk like we used to and talk like we used to, and we're not doing it to be saved. There are people in this world that are behaving in a certain way to be saved and hoping they can make it to heaven. We're not doing it to be saved. We are walking as children of light because we are light, because we are saved. When you and I walk as children of light, we prove uh, that God changes people. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Not only that, turn to Luke chapter 7 with me. We prove that God changes people when we walk as children of light. We also prove that wisdom is justified of her children. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the Bible says several things that is wisdom. We take them as a whole, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Look at Luke 7. Look at verse number 31 with me. And the Lord said, here's these Pharisees and lawyers and all these bunch of crackers that's always harassing the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you got to have a lot of gall to get up in God's face, ain't you? That's right. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? They are likened to children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another, saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came, neither eating nor drinking wine, and you say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of all her children. Some people in this world ain't going to be satisfied. If you do wrong, you're wrong. If you do right, you're wrong. It don't matter. You're just wrong, and God's wrong, and the Bible's wrong, and it don't matter how you come at them and talk to them. Everything's wrong, but God he is right. Amen. And if you chose Jesus Christ, he chose you, and that is the wisest thing any man or woman or child can ever do. Amen. And wisdom is justified of all her children. When you and I walk as children of light, we prove that wisdom is justified of her children. Last one, turn to 1 John chapter 5 with me. 1 John chapter number 5. Walk as children of light. First John chapter 5. You know what else we prove when we walk as children of light? That it is a joy to serve the Lord. Nothing better, man. Bill Gates, second richest man in the world, him and his wife busting up. Giving up, man. Why? No joy in that. Got more money than this building can hold. Family busting up. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse number 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. It is not grievous to serve the Lord. If we could get our mind wrapped around that one, he said, thou shalt not, he's saying that thing's going to hurt you. When he's saying thou shalt, he's saying, man, have at it. That thing is good for you. When he's saying Cruci crucify the flesh and the lust and affections thereof, he's saying that thing is going to help your life and bring joy and peace into your life. When we walk as children of light, we prove that it is a joy to serve the Lord. Best life you and I could ever live, it and being rich and famous. Now, we might have some more money. If I get enough of money, I ain't going to work no more. I just ain't. I'm going to let them boys hold that thing. I ain't working no notice. <laughs> 
Somebody give me a bunch of money. I ain't work. Joe, I love you, brother. I ain't working no notice. I'm going to send him a text and say, I ain't coming in, brother. But it's not in money. It's not in fame. It's not in fortune. It's not in any of that. Joy and peace is in serving the Lord. And when you and I walk as children of light, that's exactly what we'll have in our hearts. Joy and peace. Walk as children of light. Brother Matt, you close some prayer, brother.